In this other video we saw that the difference between two sounds is defined by their overtones, which are the accessory vibrations beside the one that defines the sound's pitch. We also saw the correlation between a sound's timbre and its waveform, and the fact that a few waveforms became canonic in the analog domain, namely triangle, square wave, sawtooth and sine wave. If we think that a waveform in a synthesizer is a voltage fluctuation, we can see that these transitions here are the most immediate way to get from a low voltage to a high one and vice versa. They are simple straight line and vertical jumps. We can compare the vertical and the horizontal lines to the behavior of uh, time pulses like gates and the diagonal ones to the behavior of uh, time constants uh, also known as integrator or slew limiters, you name it. They are thus quite easy to create with a circuit. The sine wave, on the other hand, is much harder to recreate in analog, but it has a scientific relevance due to the fact that it is the only waveform with a single harmonic, the fundamental. An oscillator like Brenso is designed to create many waveforms through complex modulations, but it can also output a few basic waveforms with no modulation applied at the same time. And how is that possible? Most oscillators start from one of these waveforms and derive the others through a series of mathematical operations, so to speak, made through analog circuits. The most common waveforms to start with are the triangle and the sawtooth. Generally speaking, both use the charging and discharging times of a capacitor to create voltage fluctuations. With a sawtooth we work only on the charging time, and with the triangle we work on both. The first waveform that an oscillator generates defines its core and gives name to the unit, so there are many triangle core and sawtooth core oscillators. Brenso is a triangle core oscillator, so its primary waveform is the triangle. The actual triangle wave generation is similar to the old Pong video game. The charging capacitor creates a voltage that goes up linearly, and when it reaches a certain threshold, the circuit makes the capacitor discharge. The upper and lower thresholds are basically a comparator, and they provide a logic state that can be high or low, just like Phalistris end of rise. This comparator creates a square wave which is ready to use, so we already have two waveforms. Achieving a sine wave is much more complicated and required more components. To simplify it, we pass the triangle wave into a nonlinear amplifier and exploit its nonlinearity. The amplifier does not react correctly to the incoming signal and so the amplification is different throughout the linear voltage path, and so what gets in doesn't quite get out. As a result, a linear voltage transition such as the triangle rising and falling stages becomes distorted due to the different circuit response, and the result is a very good approximation of a sine wave. It is not the purest available, but it does the job, it has a very consistent and predictable behavior, and most importantly it sounds good. This circuit performs an actual wave shaping, which is something that we used quite a lot in our module's design, so if you want to learn more about that, let me know in the comments below. The fourth output of the yellow oscillator is the complex one, and we will leave it for another episode, as today we are focusing only on the basic waveforms. The green oscillator, on the other hand, has a sort of output, and the sort of generation on a triangle core oscillator as the Brinso is indeed quite fun, and I think it could be nice to spend a few words on that. We already have have all the tools we need, which are a triangle wave and the square wave made by its logic states. So first we offset the triangle wave and make it unipolar, and then we multiply the unipolar triangle by the bipolar square wave. If you remember from our older video on four quadrant multipliers, whenever we multiply a positive voltage by a negative one, we will invert it. And if you need a recap, I will post a link to that video here and in the description. So, whenever the pulse is positive, we have our original triangle descending ramp. As the pulse gets negative, the triangle's ascending ramp gets flipped below zero volt and will continue descending. Now, the reality is more complex than that because it requires a careful level management, but the core concept is really as simple as that. If we used the two bipolar waveforms, we would have obtained a sawtooth, but an octave higher. When the logic is high, we obtain a bipolar descending ramp, but when the logic is low, the ascending ramp gets immediately flipped above zero and start descending again. So since Brinsos yellow oscillator doesn't have a sawtooth output, I think that we can create it with the tools we have here. Okay, so this is the sawtooth 
from the green oscillator and we are going to keep it here for reference and to obtain the same wave out of the yellow oscillator we are going to patch the unipolar the bipolar uh, square wave to either input of the four quadrant multiplier remember to set this switch to the left so we're gonna picking the square wave straight out of the course logic instead of the square shaper and then we need a unipolar version of the default bipolar triangle wave and we're going to use the 3 to 1 but first let's hear what happens when we blend both bipolar waveforms and multiply them through the four quadrant multiplier. This is already a sawtooth wave. The problem is that it plays an octave higher than the sine wave. And so to make it appropriately tuned, we're gonna rely on the 3 to 1 and uh, let's patch it back here and now we're gonna apply a positive offset so we're gonna engage this circuit here and boom as you can hear the more we remove the offset the more we approach the, oct the upper octave and by increasing the offset we can fine-tune the waveform and pick the right frequency and amplitude of course if we exceed the amplitude we end up squaring the extremes so we need to be more precise like this and this and that's how we get a sawtooth out of the brain so let's compare it with the green one and they are pretty much the same and that's how we do it and now that we have two sawtooth, we can slightly detune them and combine them through the 333 and patch it to one of the Kunz sections to achieve a classic East Coast sound. As you have seen, the 4 quadrant multiplier can be a very powerful tool for waveform manipulation and this gave me the idea of a possible series that explores this feature. If you're interested into that, let me know in the comments below. And for now, I think that we can cap it here. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time for more waveform experiments.